Good afternoon, real estate fans. Alice Lima here, broker John L. Scott, Southern Oregon. And today on our podcast, we're super, super excited because Kimberly London from the City of Medford Building Department is joining us. Yay. Hi, Kimberly. Hello. <laughs> so Kimberly is a development services specialist and somebody that um, I interact with, a lot of folks interact with uh, in the building department. And today, Kimberly and I wanted to talk about disclosures because it's a pet peeve of both of us, isn't it, Kimberly? Yes, it is. So you have a really interesting story um, as we were getting set up. Can you go back and just touch base on how this all started in your life? Well, I was in real estate for 10 years in Northern California. I was Isn't that remarkable? Manager, yeah, for Prudential California Real Estate, had the Northern California account. And the focus was, of course, corporate relocation. But we also did foreclosure bank-owned properties. And, you know, it was the 80s. I was much younger, much braver. And I loved the foreclosure properties, you know, going to these places, finding out if they were occupied, doing drive-by inspections for the lending institutions. Wow. That was, that was, it was just, it was really fun and I enjoyed it. So then moving here, uh, determined that people weren't checking permit history. I'd get home buyers at the counter and they've been renting out their what we reflect as a detached garage for years. And <laughs> it's like, that's not legal. It's not even habitable. And you, you know, they bought it that way. So it's like, okay, what can I do to get the word out that the city is not scary We're we're very friendly. We are normal people. And I just want to help you, you know, do the best job you can. And that's when I started doing the real estate classes for real estate agents, lenders. Yeah, yeah. you're lenders. one of the instructors here locally, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes. yeah. and I love it. And yeah, and you're really me. good at it, very thorough. So I don't know why it is, I didn't know you had a real estate background. That really, yeah. that's how yeah. you can be so targeted and focused. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 10 years, I know, I don't know now because I've been out of it for 25 plus years, but um, it was, it was fun and I really enjoyed it. And I do know some of the stuff. I don't have an Oregon license, but, um, I work in the building department and I work in the building <laughs> yeah. department. That's, that's even better. <laughs> yeah. And I worked with them back when I had, you know, foreclosure properties. It was like, okay, this was not the family room. This was a garage or this attic, you know, the stairs, something's amiss here. I don't think this was done with permits. So that was actually put, put me in the lead for this position when I applied. Oh, I bet. Based off of, I worked with building departments in Sacramento, San Mateo, San Francisco, Marin, Sonoma County. So this, I was familiar with, it's always different when you go to the other side, but I was familiar <laughs> with them. I had rapport with them. Yeah. And I knew to check permits before I put something on the market, either get it rectified or demo it back to what it was or demo it back, period. See, and you know what's really great about the city of Medford, and we're going to come loop back around to that too, but um, you guys have a brand new website and the website you had before was really amazing. In fact, people come from urban areas and their mouth just falls open at how much information, because you could actually get uh, PDF copies of permits, um, whether they're finaled or not, online with an address. And the part that I don't think people understand is you guys are there to help and protect us. It, you're not like this big bad gorilla in the room you're there to be um to help us be safe and to be happy with our home purchases yes and i want people to know up front and you do too i mean whether you're representing the seller or the potential purchaser you want to know what's going on when you show them a property and, you know, okay, this has a garage conversion. I checked. Yeah, they did permits for this in 1963. Here's, here's a copy <laughs> of the permit sitting here. 
Yeah, we can go readily available right at hand from 1961 to current. Wow. Wow. That is yeah. incredible. Yeah. So the garage conversion is a mm -hmm. very tricky thing. Um, so can you define what a proper garage conversion is supposed to, how it's supposed to be done versus people just throwing up some drywall and then putting an ad in Craigslist? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The thing with the garage conversions is, or attic conversions, or enclosing your rear porch, to extend a bedroom, bathroom, you know, they, that area is not defined as habitable. It has different construction methods and different energy codes, like lack of insulation. You know, it's on a cement slab. Uh, there's no protection there. You know, you need a vapor barrier. You need a slab edge insulation possibly raise the floor. You're going to possibly need to fur out the walls to meet, you know, the insulation, the R values for walls and ceilings. If it's a bedroom, my bedroom window has to meet certain specifications to be considered a sleeping room, a closet. So, and that's for safety, one of them. right? Yeah, that's that for, safety for safety in case of a fire. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's large enough to 5.7 square feet is the clear opening when it's open not the whole window, just the open part. And that's what they've determined is large enough for a firefighter to get in with all his apparatus on. Not so much for you to get out because we're gonna get out any way we can if there's an emergency, but if they can't get in to help you, if you're enabled or something, that's where we've really got to follow the proper protocol and rules. Yeah, and you know, when people do those conversions, sometimes there's no exit whatsoever. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they wall them up and it's like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen if there's an emergency? Right, right. Or yeah. smoke detectors or, you know, we had one where the attic was converted and it had just been converted and the stairs were within two feet of the front door. I mean, if you were coming down the stairs and someone was coming in the house, you were going to get slammed. <laughs> and I mean, in the so, head, I sh I'm sorry. I don't mean no, it now. <laughs> no, it, no, it's like, think about it. You know, and I have pictures that I show in some of my rules, some of the real estate classes. And it's like, if you see this, there's probably a problem. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's just crazy. So, um, so back porches getting uh, uh -huh. closed in, that looks like a really particularly tricky, uh, thing for somebody to do on their own. I mean, I can understand the garage because people walk in and go, Oh, there's a floor and a roof and walls, but the back porch, why would somebody think they could take an open area and make it a closed area on their own? Well, just look around at the houses and the listings in downtown Medford area. Where's your second bathroom, second half bath and your laundry? It's in what used to be the back the porch. porch. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Like those yeah. 1920 to 1940. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, constantly. And, you know, most of the time it's been there forever, but and, and uh, honestly, a lot of times I have a plumbing permit and it's right there, washer and dryer to report. So I said, okay, as long as it's, you haven't opened it up and expanded it into the kitchen or dining room or bedroom, I, you're not going to sleep in your laundry room or your half bath. Let's just work together. Make sure you disclose that it's truly not habitable square footage. It's not marketed as habitable square footage and keep trucking. Okay, so somebody yeah. buys a house mm -hmm. and the back porch is enclosed mm -hmm. as uh, agents, uh, even for the listing agent, you know, mm -hmm. somebody should be going and double checking what the status of that is, huh? You would think, you would think, <laughs> yeah, um, it's, uh, we, I mean, I've worked here since 1998 and I would always write on the packets when I talked to somebody and then 10 years later, 15 years later, you know, here it is in <laughs> and it's the same homeowner. And I have the person's name that I spoke with and it's like, you know, I'm really sorry. You know, I, they asked and I told them that yeah. it wasn't, you know, legal. And now you're stuck with it for one reason or another. 
Um, we don't go looking for stuff. That's another thing people think, you know, getting a permit, like if you're replacing your heating and air system, uh -huh. we're going to come out and we're going to look at your heating and air system. If, if there's, we're not going to go look and see the garages converted or the attics converted or the rear porch is converted. We don't have time to do that. And it doesn't harbor goodwill. They're only going to call out if they blatantly see something odd during the scope of their inspection. Or, or hugely dangerous. Yes. Yes. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, the front porch and decks missing because it was dilapidated and you have to walk up, you know, a step ladder to get in the house. Yeah. I'm only laughing because yeah, that's happened before. Yeah, so Sorry. <laughs> a few times. Yeah. yeah. And we had an attic conversion one time that um, was sold and they hadn't done any reinforcement of the ceiling. So with all that bedroom furniture and stuff up there, there's, you know, there's a live dead load issue. Oh, I and, didn't think of that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. And the foundation hadn't been beefed up to hold two floors either. It was, I mean, this was, this was one of my first ones and I was like, oh boy, it was 30, $37,000 just in structural repairs. Oh dear. Oh, it dear. wasn't, you know, after the fact. So it wasn't a win-win for anybody. Yeah. At all. Yeah. It, you know, but it happens. I just want the agents to know they can fill out a public records request and just ask for the permit history. If there's something specific you're looking for, you know, call it out. Say, hey, do you have something for the garage conversion? And let's see if we can find it. I have one mm -hmm. now where they have all the permits, but it looks like they added on to permits in between construction, which is common. You know, you're in the middle of something, you're like, well, since I'm doing this, I might as well do this. Oh, I so see. there's little notes, but not enough for me to articulate exactly what it was they did. And I'm relying on the agent, you know, who's walking through the property to help me and tell me, okay, this is, you know, converted. Yes, it's, you know, family room with skylights, you know, so I could fix my records. Aha. Uh -huh, so I'm not saying it's, idea. you know, it's, it goes both ways. It goes uh -huh. both ways. Yeah. And some of our older permits just say remodel. <laughs> you know, so it's like, okay, you know, in 1962, there was a remodel. So yeah. then I'll look, you know, is there a plumbing permit with it? Yeah. Yeah. There's a plumbing permit. They marked, you know, lab water closet didn't mark tub and shower. So I know that remodel. So then I ask, Hey, is this, um, half bath in the, what was the garage conversion? Yeah. Okay. Well, this permit was, I mean, we could put two and two together and figure it out. Usually. usually. Yeah, usually. And you know, the interesting thing is <clears throat> it's okay to have a bathroom in your garage. I mean, nobody, Absolutely. nobody has a problem with that. You can even yeah. have a wet bar. Mm -hmm. You can, you know, you can have a giant shop with a theater or whatever. You just, mm -hmm. you just want it to be safety checked so that everybody's going to be okay in case something goes sideways. Well, and with insurance too, you well, know, then there's that, right? You know, accidents happen, um, fires, you know, medical issues, lawsuits, you know, whatever. And your insurance company, they're calling, they're calling us to check on the permit history. Wow. That makes so, sense. But I didn't see yes, that. Wow. Yes, yeah. And so, and then I'm, you know, they're requesting the permit history too. And yeah. so the appraisers, the appraisers are so good in this valley. I mean, yeah. they really do their due diligence and um, they re even refis, you know, hey, does this have permits? Uh, you know, because they've got to disclose that. Mm -hmm. And a couple of them come in and actually real estate agents, we have real estate books dating all, or not, sorry, real estate. We have permit books dating all the way back to 1926. Oh, on so paper? You, yes, yes. So you can look back through ledger books and people have, I've had real estate agents do that. And they're like, I found it. I found it in 1938. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. So it was grandfathered in. It's on the property line, but we confirmed right here with the permit. Wow. That it was done then. So wow. there's, there's other um, avenues also to figure out if something was permitted or not permitted. Yeah. So it's legwork on the agent part buyer's part 
Not very much though, because you guys make it so easy. You really do. Try, try to. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to work together. I, I don't want buyers or sellers who bought it that way at the counter crying mm -hmm. because it's getting ready to close escrow. And now I'm telling them, you know, there's a $500, $1,000, $2,000 permit mm -hmm. or that the detached garage on this older home is not habitable at all. You yeah. can't rent it out. You can't use the kitchen. I had had one where it was being refied. It was a VA loan and not one person checked to see if the second unit was legal and he needed that income to qualify. Right. So was it like two cottages, two older houses, a garage and a cottage? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty. Yeah. So they weren't it's, permitted. It's pretty common. And, you know, we have a 50, 50 chance, but we don't go looking for stuff. You, you people need to make us aware that there's something there or complaint driven. Mm -hmm. So what happens if there's a fire? Like, let's go back to insurance because that really scares me. You know, we just had the Almeda fires and even though uh, Medford wasn't impacted directly, um, like, are there people out there that lost a stick built home and couldn't collect all their insurance? I wonder mm -hmm. because, oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, and it, it goes as, as far as there was one and it was caused by wiring they put in a new heating and air system, the homeowner did, and they ran the wiring for the heating and air system in with the duct work. And it caught on fire, of course, and it did oh. burn the house. The they checked for permits, where's the permits, no permits. Then they, you know, keep on going. Cause I mean, you can't, you just can't do that. You may think, you know what you, are doing and maybe you do i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say you right. don't it. Um, <laughs> yeah. but sometimes you don't and it can cause issues like converting your attic and not beefing up the ceiling or foundation yeah well i've seen people add second stories kind of mm -hmm. on the back where you can't quite see it from the street or whatever and mm -hmm. yeah and i know i'm the one saying they're going i don't think the foundation was reinforced so they're going Oh, yeah. yeah. How do I do this now? Well, you can hire an yeah. engineer. But that wiring story is really scary. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's it, really scary. I mean, we just had, I mean, there's house fires. I mean, thankfully, not a lot. But I mean, city of Medford's had two, you know, fatality house fires. Yeah. What, the last three weeks? Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's kind of rare, but that's also super scary. And I don't know you know, I don't know the stats on those at all. Uh, yeah. so I, I can't really speak other than it's super sad. It is so sad. And we're yeah. such a small community. It's like, we either know them or we know somebody who knows them. It's just, it's very personal here. Um, <laughs> so yeah. So, um, you know, a couple of times, uh, in my past, I have purchased houses, uh, for cash and then did not, check the permit things. So this is how I learned. I learned the expensive oh. way. And then um, later on, when I went to sell it, I got tagged. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, in, in those situations, I went ahead and fixed it, but I was really mad, you know, mm -hmm. and, and just mad at the whole process. Mm -hmm. um, and then later realized that, that this can all be done before you even put your house on the market and it should be part of that whole process. So how does that work? If, you know, Mr. And Mrs. Homeowner says, I'm going to sell in six months. I want you guys to help me get ready. What, mm -hmm. what would be the process with you? I would first step, even if you don't think there's any thing, fill out a public records request and request the permit history on the property. I mean, what if there wasn't, you know, a certificate of occupancy ever issued on the house? It's happened. We, we, building department's only been computerized since 96. So prior to that, it's all paper. Um, we do still have the records, but the old school stuff wasn't as good as, you know, just putting right. an address and off you go. Well, we were all more casual then too. Yeah. Or there might be stuff that was permitted that you didn't even think would have even needed a permit. But as an agent, the stuff that you find out prior to listing it, get it rectified. 
I mean, mm-hmm. the wood stove thing, is there no permit for the wood stove? Let's just yank that puppy out. Right. Where we have someone that wants it. And now you're buying them a brand new one. And it's not the former real estate agent. <laughs> no. And well, or, or to me, what would be worse is a potential purchaser's agent bringing it to your attention on a listing that you've already listed. Mm-hmm. I mean, know as much about the property as you can mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. up front mm-hmm. beforehand and get it figured out before it goes on the market. Mm-hmm. And even as a homeowner, you can do that before you even talk to your agent if you want. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it really goes back to what you said in the beginning was disclosure, 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 disclosure. And, um, It's okay for sellers to be in front of that. You don't have to wait for the buyers to do it all, you know, get in front of it. You'll sleep better. (laughs) Well, yeah. Well, not only that, but it'll, you know, you'll look good. You'll come and say, I want to list your home, but we've got to get this. Yeah. And we want to get it figured out now because it's, you know, the buyer is going to want the work well, the seller now, but I mean, you know, it used to be, you know, the opposite and, you know, now I want you to replace the carpet in here, or I want you to, you know, just all sorts of little things. So if it's figured out and it's there and it's done and it's legal and they call and they say, yes, it has all the permits or even printing out the permits or the history and leaving it with the flyer on the counter. That is a great idea. Oh my God. That's a great idea. I'm going to add that. Yeah. I mean, you know, we could do just like a profile, you know, sheet. I tried to do a one page summary and then a lot of times we dwell down into, you know, a, the nitty gritty of it. But if you could do, you know, even on the back of the flyer or whatever, you know, here's the permit history. That's amazing. We're going to add that to our soap boxes. <laughs> no, it just makes you look good. It makes you look yeah. better. Um, and I'm wondering, you know, even if you're thinking of staying in the house till the bitter end, um, it wouldn't be a bad safety check, I guess, you know, just to have all the permits, have somebody from your family pull all the permits and just make sure it's so, cause we have so many elders that don't want to move now. And that's actually part of our inventory problem. Um, if they're going to stay in their house forever and ever, instead of downsizing, then maybe somebody should go in and look. Mm-hmm. Well, we won't just, we don't do like home inspections. It has to be something that you need a permit on. Right. But they could at least start looking at the, uh, what history. you call the permit history. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And even like the older historic homes that people purchase and they want to know the permit history, you can make an appointment and come look at our ledger books mm-hmm. and try to find all the history on it. Oh, that would be so fun. It was, someone did it as a gift. They were on Queen Anne or Ready. I can't remember. Oh, great one. streets. Yeah. Yes. But they found when the house, it was a Montgomery Ward's house built oh. in 1923. And wow. they found the whole history. And she did a book for her husband as a present. And I, so we printed out, you know, all the permits that we could find. And I just thought, what a, just a fabulous idea. Oh, that is so yeah. sweet. Yeah. We should, we should do that. Yeah. So, so that's good to know. So you have to have an appointment now though, because of the Corona. Yes. Can we even come in and look at those books with an appointment? Yes, we can. Okay. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We'll we'll start with, you know, the public records request on our Mm -hmm. website. We'll give you the permit history from 61 to current. And then if the house was built prior to that, you can email back and say, Hey, can I make an appointment to come look at the ledger books? And absolutely. We have a private room that we sanitize. We don't get a lot of people, but uh-huh. we, I mean, we do clean it. You know, you have to <laughs> we'll get you in the room and, uh, you know, there's a job. We're having a job fair tomorrow from one That's to four. Right. That's right. That's right. Parking lot. I will be there. So uh, you can come my and the radio really. station will be there. So if it gets boring, we could have a dance party. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, it'll, it's going to be fun. So if anyone's like interested in more information about the city of Medford, Come down from one to four and just meet us. Well, let's talk about your job fair tomorrow a little bit. So it's one to four tomorrow, which is Mm -hmm. Saturday, uh, April 24th. And why is Medford, City of Medford, having a job fair? There are jobs available. The city almost always has something available. There's a lot of um, full-time positions open in numerous different departments by fluke people retiring, you know, going, moving, all sorts of reasons. 
Um, I've worked here for almost 23 years, so it is a great place to work. Uh, there's also the temporary positions, you know, for parks, for like lifeguards and, you know, different positions with the parks that are available in the summer. Uh, traffic counters, you know, for public works. There's all sorts of stuff that happens in the summer where they need extra help. And it's a good mm -hmm. in for someone that wants to work for the city. I mean, you have to start somewhere. That's a good foot in the door. Yeah. And I think yeah. the city is a great gig. It's uh, mm -hmm. you guys are just wonderful. I think it's a wonderful um, environment, a great organization. Um, you guys are always so professional and you, you talk to people uh, in a way that they understand. You know, and if you go to other states, no offense, <laughs> but I've had to go to other people's mm -hmm. states mm -hmm. encounters and they're not very helpful. They're not very nice. And you feel like a friggin' idiot. And you guys, you guys are always so good about the educational part, you know, so you walk away knowing something. Well, you don't know unless you ask. Right. Yeah. And, and I remember being on the other side of that in the 80s and <laughs> you know, going way back there. But uh, and, you know. You need to submit a plot plan, huh? But yeah, I know, right? <laughs> a plot plan, you know, submit a plot plan. And it's like, oh, a, oh and then they tell, oh, a site plan. Okay. You know, <laughs> 15 different words, just like a market value analysis or, you know, right, exactly. it, it could be called by different things. You just got to yeah. figure out what that person's calling it and figure it out. Well, Kimberly, I love talking to you. Um, you and I are going to chat more frequently as things evolve <laughs> Excuse me, with the city of Medford. Um, so uh, if somebody wants to get on your new website, where do they go? www.cityofmedford.gov. Nice. And it's yeah. super slick. You guys are going to love it. Kimberly London, thank you so much. She's uh, with the city of Medford building department development services specialist. Mwah. Thank you so much. We'll see you next thank time. Bye-bye.